Thursday, April 8th, 1943, 7 p.m. Dear Johnny, just was handed your very interesting letter and was glad to hear that you'll be at Camp Grant for a while. That's the ticket. See Lieutenant Colonel Walsh about an airplane mechanic job because that's the best bet today and take my word for it. I knew you'd pass everything okay. A lad with your physique couldn't miss. Things move pretty fast out here and no telling how long I'll be here, but for some time yet. I've had a lot of false alarms, and the only time I'll believe I'm on my way will be if I'm at sea for more than 20 days. A fellow has to be cool all the time. I used to be pretty cool on the pitching mound and still managed to take it easy. Knowing I won't be in the States much longer and probably won't have a chance to tell you by letter in the near future, but we're one of those outfits who make beach landings in the middle of the night on the roughest coastlines possible, and seize airports, railroads, cities, and enemy coast defenses. The Allies are going to move soon, and the Lucky Seven will be leading the way, and it may be to Japan itself. Have Ma hang three stars in the window now that there's three of us in. If you hear of a big new offense in the Pacific or Europe, you can be sure the Pulp will be in there outpitching the Axis. But then again, I most likely will never even see a slant eye. Enclosed is a code I made up, and if I do leave, I'll let you all know where I'm going there by means of this code. Always thinking of all of you, and there's no better father, mother, or brothers in the world than at 2310. And maybe at times we don't express much sentiment, but deep down in my heart, all the money couldn't buy anyone better than little Musha, Dad, Sanny, Johnny, and Frank. No siree. So long and until again real soon, and don't worry about me. See you pronto via letters. Pitcher. Here's a list of possible places and the name behind them. So if any mail is censored, like Frank's, be sure to look for any of the following. Bantam means I'm in Britain. Chickens means in China. Turkins in India. Ralph, the former star pitcher. The lucky one of the four. The Battle of a Two began May 11, 1943. Ralph arrived with the 7th Infantry Division on the muddy, freezing shores of the Aleutian Islands. They were fighting to take back American territory. Japanese soldiers had landed there six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, taking control of the islands of Kiska and Atu. It was one of the first invasions of American territory since the War of 1812. Of a battleship's guns, the United States forces move in to drive the Japanese from rocky, fog bound Atu, strategic island in the Aleutian chain. Troops waiting for the zero hour. Time to go over the side. Atu is barren and brutal. The winds regularly blow more than 50 miles per hour. The men fought through freezing, drenching rains and snow hunting for the Japanese enemy's deeply entrenched positions. The soldiers of Ralph's division were unprepared for just how long the battle would take and how harsh the weather would be. Frostbite and exposure were just as much of a threat as a Japanese bullet. It was early in the battle when a shell exploded 15 feet from Ralph, leaving him with a shrapnel wound to the head. He shrugged off the injury and stayed in the fight another 18 days. In his eyes, other soldiers in his unit had suffered far worse. Dear Mother, Dad, Frank, and Sanny, was in a battle against the Japs, and we really knocked them out. It's all over now, but it's a big step toward that final victory. If the people back home ever have any doubts about the fighting caliber of its soldiers, they want to see this outfit in action and I can assure you that all their doubts would be erased. It was a rugged struggle, and all the weather in the world couldn't hold us back. The Jap is a cunning fighter, full of tricks, but we hadn't been training for nothing, so we knew just what to look for. Their snipers were always busy, and once one of the boys located him, his sniping days were over. A foxhole doesn't look like a pleasant place to live in, but in battle, it's the only way to live. Our battalion covered more ground and fought against greater odds than any other American unit in this fight and received a citation in view of that. 
We're all glad it's over now, and it seems like a luxurious life compared to the days of battle. But I'll never forget the boys who gave their lives for the greatest nation on earth, the good old USA. Nor the heroic deeds of the officers and men, nor the fighting conditions that we had to overcome. Food and clothing left behind by the Japs was a lifesaver when it was impossible to get some of our own supplies at times on account of the terrain. I'm in for the Purple Heart Medal, along with four others in the company. Lots of love to you all, Ralph. Much to Ralph's unit's disappointment, they were not sent home after the battle. Instead, they were sent to Hawaii for jungle warfare training. Ralph was going right back into the thick of it. It was Frank who headed home instead. Having survived the Battle of Tulagi, he contracted malaria and jaundice in the Pacific and was sent back to the United States for treatment. He had a 30-day furlough to go home to Rockford and was looking forward to seeing his Chicago Cubs play baseball. And then on his way home, on the famous Navy Pier in Chicago, he froze. He just stopped, dead in his tracks. He didn't know what was wrong or why everyone was watching him. Authorities found him confused and restless. He was having some sort of paranoid episode. Instead of allowing him to continue home, the Marine Corps sent him to a military hospital north of Chicago. They wanted him under close observation. For every four men wounded, one soldier will become a psychiatric casualty. Such men may be shaking or crying, but more often they are just very tired and dirty and depressed. Courage, pride, and loyalty to their comrades support them in battle. But there are fierce demands upon their emotional resources. July 9th, 1943, Ward 91 South. Dear Mother, arrived in Chicago to report into the Naval Hospital at Great Lakes, where I am stationed for treatment. Tell Dad I wish I could have made the grade home, but hospital care comes first. Thinking always Ward 91 you. South. Dear Musha, I'm still here at U.S. Naval Hospital being watched over by some experts in the art of bringing one back to normal. I needed a short rest. My nerves are kind of jittery. I've been looking to the bright side of life. Everything's going to turn out all right. Where there is a will, there's a way. Is Dad still kicking those chubby legs around? Your Dad, thanks for coming to see me yesterday. It sure helps to know everything is fine at home. How about sending some of those Rockford newspapers in a bundle so I can keep up with local news too? I've been reading a lot and writing letters, as you can see. Gee, it was too bad Musha had gone to so much trouble to greet my homecoming. But it won't be long before I see the old homestead again soon. Everything is swell here. The food is good, and the bed's soft and comfortable. I miss my hiking and fresh air. Tell Sanford to keep trying to get me a line and explain how sorry I am for not coming straight home. Keep up that courage. Keep smiling. Love, your son, Frank. July 19th, 1943. My dear geometry expert, it's about time I dropped you a line, I know. Let us know soon enough in advance when you will be heading home and for how long, since I must notify the boss in ample time so I can get my two weeks at the proper time. We'll all go over to the movies, on hikes, to big league games, and the other attractions in the Windy City. We'll play catch and pepper and hit fly balls. Yes, sir, a grand time is within your reach. However, I leave you free to be your own judge in regards to this since you know yourself better than anyone else knows you. Same holds true for me or any other person. Always remember that. By all means, this is not my intention to get you all petered out. This is supposed to be a vacation, not work. You shall take things as easy and recuperate under the shade of the old apple tree, sipping cool lemonades. Rather, you sit under the tree, and I will sit under the open sky and let the sunshine strike me. You can imagine how transparent and waxen a person looks after being cooped up in a working quarter where there are no windows. I sincerely believe you will come to you a lot faster in the backyard than where you are now provided you won't be needing any treatment such as quinine, etc. You have to be thankful that physically you are okay. That is the main thing. You are okay. If you decide not to come home, believe me, 
It won't make one particle of difference to me because I shall remember that you do what is best for you, which in turn is the best for us. Still no word from Ralph. It's after 10 now, so I will close this letter. As ever, intellectually yours, Sanford. July 22nd, 1943. Dear Frank, how are you feeling today, Frank? I'm still waiting for the wire from home telling of your arrival, and then I shall put my propaganda machine into motion and get me a furlough. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. We'll sign off now for school. Hasta luego. Adios. Johnny. July 30th, 1943. Dear Dad, I'm still waiting for the good news about Frank's homecoming and will act accordingly. Just got back from school and am now working on the famous Rolls-Royce engines and I'm taking it all in. Yes, indeedy. Italy sure is out of the war soon and things look mighty good all over. Did a good trick last night. I saw a big toad hopping around. I put my cap over him and brought him in the barracks and sneakily put him under the covers of one of the barracks mates. A few saw me and got a kick out of it. Then we were all waiting for the victim to come in. He finally came. We kept quiet and watched him go over to his bunk. <laughs> his eyes popped out when he saw something crawl around under his cover. He said in astonishment, What the hell is that? Did we ever get a big laugh out of his expressions? <laughs> I'm still the same old teaser, ain't I? All for now, more later. Lots of love, John. February 5th, 1944. My dear Ralph, just finished eating supper. We eat the best there is, as you no doubt know. We hear quite regularly from the swearer and the salesman, as well as from Pitchy. I will probably receive another deferment. My city slicker lease expired January 27th, but I am still in 2B. Dad is fiddling around, evening up tonight's papers. Musha is in the kitchen, jabbering at Dad. I sit here at Dad's desk in the front room from where I will soon see him dozing and falling closer and closer to the table. I am now reading Physics, a 486-page book by Tower, Smith, Turton, and Cope. Frank has read The Robe and is now on The 39 Steps. The salesman realizes that it doesn't pay to come all the way home from Indiana only to have to return in less than 12 hours. That is the way to figure it. Wait until the leave of a few days is granted before venturing homeward. We'll retire at 7.30 tonight, so I will close this brief epistle by wishing you the best of success and health. As ever, SIG. Sanford, the second oldest brother, was initially classified by the military as 2B deferred from serving to support war production. Later letters say he was designated with a 4F status, not qualified to serve for mental or physical reasons. It was something the family tried to keep quiet. And it may have been part of the reason that as Frank's mental state worsened, Sanford remained his touch point, the one he communicated with the most. And Frank's mental state was worsening. He wrote to his family about coming home and never made it, Dear Sanford, that game East played must have been a peach. I will try to see Purdue and Indiana play Saturday and get a pass to come home for the weekend. It's tough to get any liberty from our commanding officer. We'll try to get Thanksgiving or a later date so I can see John anyway. Going on liberty tonight, you're see a show. He'd go out drinking instead. You, on account of no weekend passes. I spent the weekend with a soldier and two of his girlfriends. There is a chance he was court-martialed after taking an unauthorized absence from the base. Then he was demoted. I spent a good weekend dancing and relaxing down here. I saw John just a few months ago. He went from sending money home to, to asking for money to cover his partying and the Dear fines Moshe, he accrued. I'm trying to get a weekend pass so I can see you all again. Maybe. Will you send me a 10 spot by Western Union so I can get it Saturday afternoon? Run short on account of bonds and fines. Need cash for chow and laundry. We'll pay back soon. Keep smiling. Love, Frank. Frank described his ailment as jittery nerves. The hospital called it combat fatigue, a common diagnosis for soldiers at the time. Looking back, 
It seems obvious Frank was suffering from some form of post-traumatic stress. But that diagnosis didn't exist until the 1980s. To his family, Frank underplayed the seriousness of his condition. It was something he could snap out of with rest. But Frank never snapped out of it. Instead, as he continued to worsen, he was ordered from his base in Indiana to the Naval Hospital in Charleston, South Carolina. There, he was given a new diagnosis, schizophrenia. Why do people respond so differently to the experience of war? Frank, the oldest, the Marine, the one who started the war ready to take on the world? By 1944, he was bouncing in and out of hospitals, battling serious mental health issues. And Ralph, the star pitcher, always the lucky one? After his first battle, he was cheered as a war hero with a purple heart. He was the type of man they'd write articles about in his hometown newspaper. Someone who could make mom and dad, Musha and Borsk, as the brothers called them, very proud. And he was already training for another battle in the Pacific. My dear Ralph, It was last night, February 16th, that the casualty telegram came to us that you had been seriously wounded February 4th at Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshalls. It could have been worse, and it was with that thought in mind that I told Musha and Borsk not to worry, said that any guy who could pick other guys off second base like you did, one after another, was plenty quick moving. Your ability in sports has been to your advantage in your most recent encounter. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Amen. Siggy. (laughs) 